Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! Among professional musicians, we have a little dirty secret. It's not a dirty secret, but it's a secret. It's a secret because nobody wants to hear it, and it's, this is it. If your rhythm is good enough, if you really nail the rhythm in your playing, you can play whatever you want. You can play even the wrong notes or the wrong chords. If your rhythm is solid, people will just go with it because it sounds like you mean it. Everybody thinks they have perfect timing and perfect rhythm. Everybody at the beginning thinks, yes, of course I'm playing on time. In my experience, nobody does until they train. So recently, a student of mine asked me about how to make her rhythm more solid. And so here, I'm going to share with you my answer to her. And this answer, answer contains some secret practices to make your rhythm rock solid and professional. If, but only if, if you practice those things, your rhythm is going to be unshakable and you're going to sound perfect. You could play anything you want, it will sound good, guaranteed. So, let me show you those secret practices. Diana? Hi. So, um, I, my question is around how you can evaluate your, the sort of integrity of your inner rhythm clock, mm -hmm. the steadiness of that, when you're, for example, adding additional elements like singing solo performance. Um, obviously, I'm always interested in improving my own skills in this area, but also it's kind of, in, I was sure that you would have amazing ways to teach it. Mm -hmm. So I was keen to hear your Yeah, so thoughts. we talked about this before. So you are trying to see if you can hold the time constant without having a metronome. Yeah, how you, how you train your, yeah, exactly, your inner time clock and your ability to keep it steady mm -hmm. when you're singing. And Okay. Are you familiar with, the, with that old band, Weather Report? Somewhat. Okay. Whether you know the songs or not. The songs are nice. But the band was made by amazing musicians. And reportedly, I don't know if the story is true. Okay, I haven't checked. I haven't asked any of them. But I've heard this story from more than one source. They used to train in this way. They were getting all together in a room as a warm-up. Okay, and they were giving themselves a tempo. And then they say, now, 136 bar from now, we're gonna, back here. we're gonna be back here. Then they go, they grab a coffee from the machine. And they come back in the same room. They enter, they look toward the wall so that they don't look together, and they all together go, all together. That is insane. If it's true. <laughs> I hope it's true, I really hope it's true, because they will be like, yes, <laughs> okay? They wanted to do this to make sure that they really, really, really get the rhythm down, okay? And so when I heard this story, I was like, how can I get this for myself? First of all, I confess, I cannot do 136 bars at such a steady tempo while doing other activities, okay? That's not going to happen. Not, not for me, already. not yet, at least, okay? But there are ways to set your internal clock, okay? So here's what I do with some of my students. And you can do it with yourself. And I did it with myself. You, you use an uh, electronic metronome, okay? And it's important that it's not one of the mechanical one. I know the mechanical ones sound nicer, <laughs> okay? And it's important it's not one on the, on the phone, because you can still see what's going on. You want to turn on the metronome and start clapping in time. Then you or somebody else turn down the volume of the metronome and you turn it the other way. And you keep doing it. And then somebody, you or somebody else, you can keep tapping your foot, for instance, and turn on the volume of the metronome and see how far how away you are from the metronome, okay? When you do this, I would recommend you guys do this for like two bars, okay? It's already enough, <laughs> okay? You typically rush a lot when you do this, okay? The problem here is that your brain does not process time in a simple way. So whenever there is a stimulus, your brain slows down time because it wants more time to analyze the stimulus. And then there is no stimulus, you speed up time, which means that when you turn off the metronome, most likely you're going to be ahead of the beat, which does not sound good, as we all know. That's one factor. The other factor is that whenever you are testing yourself or whenever you are under 
examination, okay? Typically when you are on stage or you're in a studio and you click the record button and there is the red light, okay, you have all this adrenaline pumping in you like, I'm gonna to record this solo. It has to be perfect at the first take because it's recorded and everybody will be able to hear it. That's where you start speeding up because you're full of adrenaline. I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating, but the way to fix that is to get used to it and do it often. So one way is to do this with a metronome, okay? This is simple, reliable, it can be done anywhere. You just need a metronome. If you are in studio, on the other hand, you have better options. You could do this. You open your recording program. You create a click track or a drum track or whatever. And then you mute the central part. And then you start and start recording something. And it doesn't have to be complex, okay? You can just record. Just do that. Really, the usual eight notes or any kind of strumming pattern, something simple, one chord. But you start, so in the first two, or two bars, say you have the drum track. Then you have four bars without. And you keep recording. And when the drum track comes back, you should be in time. Okay, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Not, not the first few times. Um, but once you get used to it, it's not even that complex either. Okay? Now, the beauty of doing this in the studio and recording, I mean, it could be your home studio, you don't have to, be, not, not to pay for studio hours, but it could be your own studio. The beauty of doing this is that you can see the track you recorded, so you know when you went out of time. And then you also know if you went faster or slower. Yes, exactly. And by how much. Exactly. Okay, so it's, it's good because then you can start diagnosing the problem, like are you, going, uh, are you going ahead of the beat immediately or are you late but only at the end? Or, so you can have an idea on where you are. Okay, that would be level one for me. Then there is level two. Level two is this. Do the same with the, with the, um, with the drum track. So leave a gap. Record your first track. Mute the track and do it again on a second track. Not only both tracks should come back in time with the drums, but they should also be synchronized with each other. To tell if they're synchronized, you pan one right, one left, hard right and hard left, and you listen. If the, if the track sounds like a big guitar, I mean, the, 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 it, every note hits at the same time, you're good. If the track feels like it's shifting back and forth, it means you're not hitting those notes at the same time, and you need to work a little bit more to get the synchronization right. That's tough, <laughs> okay? especially the first few times. Okay? That's why I say start with one chord, start with a simple rhythm. Once you, can do the, can you, can, you have this down for one chord and a simple rhythm, it's easy to go on more complex rhythms because you've got the feeling now. Okay? And then here, you can also do things like try to play slightly ahead of the beat, slightly behind the beat. But I would suggest you do this only after you're sure you can play exactly on the beat. OK? Now, I will start with a gap between two and four bars, depending on the tempo. Faster tempos are easier, because there's less time <laughs> it ups when, you, when, you, when, you, when there's a gap, and also because faster tempos are easy to feel. The slower tempos are much harder. But then you expand the gap, and then you can expand as much as you want. There's no top limit for that. I observe that many of my students tend to, and myself actually, tend to go faster when they're playing live. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Again, so it's a kind of nice yes. way to monitor for that as well. Yes, adrenaline happens all the time. So, yes. A good, an idea, not a good idea. Well, well, not saying this is a specific good idea, but an idea could be to train yourself and your students under pressure. Yeah. So you do the exact same exercise with an audience hmm. and see if it works on stage. I don't know. I mean, it, it depends on the facilities you have. And um, I mean, I don't know if you can pay an audience to look at you while you practice. <laughs> I, I don't have this kind of resources you may, you may have, but it's something you can do. OK, cool. uh, again, it, it needs a metronome so you have an idea. Cool. Great. Um, thank you very much. Great thank tips. You. Thank you, Diana. Great question.